Full stack applications have changed a lot over the last 10 years. Previously, most applications would just return their front end code structured as HTML with maybe a sprinkling of JavaScript for interactivity. But with the mass adoption of front end frameworks like React, Angular, and Vue, the front ends become a little bit more complicated. It makes for more interactive and powerful applications, but it comes to the cost of complexity and maintainability. You now have two separate code bases, one that powers the front end and one that powers the back end usually built with two different languages, two different frameworks, or two different technology stacks completely. And that can make it a little tough when it comes to developing these applications locally or deploying them out to a production environment. So what can we do? Well, there's a few different solutions out there that allow you to package up your front-end and back-end code as a monolith application. In this video, I'm going to talk about one in particular that I've worked with a few different times. Let's take a look at how a full stack application might be structured now and how we can use that same code to build a modern monolith. So I have this example e-commerce application that I stood up using Next.js as the front end. So it's built on React. And we can see that there's a list of products. And if I click into one of these, I'll get some details about it. I can also navigate back home and click on a new one. And yeah, this is, this is the whole application. And as you might expect, the data has to pull in from somewhere, and that somewhere is a PHP-powered API using the Laravel framework. Let's go ahead and take a look at the code that powers this. So everything is in this full stack project folder, and we see we have two folders here, our separate code bases. We have our front-end Next application and our back-end Laravel API. So let's focus on the front-end. We can go ahead and open up this app folder, and we have our products page. This is a pretty typical page. So we have an initial state here, an empty array of products, and then we fetch our products from our localhost API, get the response as JSON, and set the products as the result. And then down here we have our markup that displays the products and maps them out as individual links. And then if we go into the individual page for a product, we can see that it is very similar. So we use our params object to get our slug, set the initial state for our product, get that product using that slug in this API call here, get the JSON, and add it to the product object. And then down here we have our markup to display the details for this product. It's pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and take a look at our backend and see how that works. So if we go into our routes API file, we can see that we have two routes, one that gets our products and one that gets an individual product. Our main products endpoint just returns every product with the category attached to it, and then our individual one finds a specific product and returns it back with a category relationship attached to it. But right away, this is the big problem that I have with applications like this. We have redundancy. We're creating API endpoints in our backend to return back or manipulate some kind of data. And then we're using those exact same endpoints in our front end to fetch that data and display it out in our application. It'd be great if we could consolidate these two together. And that's exactly what this library promises to do. And that library is called Inertia.js. If we take a look at the documentation site for this, we can see that it brands itself as the modern monolith, build single page apps without building an API. So we should be able to build a single page React, Vue, and Svelte applications, but using server side routing with any back end. Now it does say it's tuned for Laravel, but if we go down here and take a look at the server side installation guide, there are a number of community adapters for frameworks like Rails, Adonis.js, Clojure, Django, Go, Node.js, and more. So what is the difference of an application built with Inertia versus the one that we just looked at? Well, I have one already put together, so let's take a look at it. All right, we can see that this looks very similar to the one that we looked at earlier that was built with Next.js. We can click into any of our products here, get some details about it, and then go back to the home page and do the same with a different product. So what's the difference between this and the Next.js application that we looked at earlier? Well, this is all contained in a single code base, the front end and the back end together. Let's see what that looks like. So here's our full stack project as a monolith. And if we open this folder up, we can see it's just a Laravel application. So we don't have a separate front end and back end code base like we did with the Next.js app. We can actually go into our resources folder, the JS folder, and then see under pages, our React components here that power each of these pages. So this is the main products page, and this is the individual product page. This is it. This is what powers this whole page. There is no data fetching associated with this component. It all happens automatically to the props associated with the component. If you're asking yourself, how does that come together? All we have to do is take a look at the route that's associated with this page. 
So in Laravel, that's in our routes web file. If we open it up and scroll down, we can see that we have two routes defined, one for the products and one for the individual product. And in both of these, we're just returning back inertia render and then the name of the component that's associated with this particular route. As a second argument to the inertia render function, we pass in an array of properties that we want to automatically pass into that component. So for our products component, for the main products list, we just want a list of the products that are associated with the entire application. So just like we saw with the API for a similar route, we're just returning back all of the products in their associated category. And that's all that's required for this. And similarly, like we did with the API for the individual product, we're just returning back that product loaded up with the category relationship. That's all that we need to tie this together. Using inertia render and then creating the individual component, whether that is in React like we see here, or Vue or Svelte, that is automatically populated on the front end and the data is pulled in immediately. And then navigating to one of these individual products, that data is also pulled in as we expect. But it's a single page application and we're not doing data fetching in the individual components. So where is the data coming from that we pass in in our components? Well, Inertia, despite having a very complex and large amount of documentation, actually is pretty straightforward and simple in the way that it works. And I'll open up my network diagram so I can explain this as we go. So on the initial page load, we see we have products here. We can look at the response that we get back and it is HTML. It's HTML with an app element and a data page attribute associated with it that has a large JSON string attached to it. This is our initially loaded in data that is then hydrated by React or Vue or whatever front end framework you're using and used to display in the component associated with the page that we just loaded up. Now, when we make a subsequent call to a separate page, let's click on this one here, we see that we didn't force a refresh of the page. We can scroll down here. We can see that we have a get call that was made to the same URL that is in our browser header, except instead of getting HTML back as the response, we get a JSON object. It tells us what component to use as well as the props that should be pushed into that component. So it's just a JSON string associated with the data that's populated inside of this component. But if we refresh this page, if we create a hard refresh, we see that instead we are getting HTML back. So how does that work? How does it know when to send HTML and when to send JSON? It just looks for a header that's passed in. So if we go back here to the home page, we can see that we get back our products. And if we look at the uh, headers that are sent to this, we have this X inertia header that's passed in as true. So by calling X inertia true, it's telling our backend framework, hey, this is an inertia request. We want back the JSON associated with it to populate the component that we need to on the front end. And all that's handled automatically by whatever inertia plugin you're using for whatever backend framework you happen to be building with. So for me with this Laravel application, inertia render determines if that header is available. And if so, it just displays back the component that should be used as well as the data associated with it automatically populated in as this JSON object. Otherwise, it just returns back the standard Laravel response, but instead responds with the full markup as well as in here, the element that should be hydrated and displayed as the front end framework that we're using. And that's basically it. This allows us to create responsive full stack single page applications using the framework you enjoy using without having to separate it into a separate code base. So I can build with React, I can build with Vue, but I can remove the redundancy that comes with having those as a separate entity. This also increases my productivity and reduces my development time. Let's see what it'll take to add a new page to this application. So all we need to do is create the route for this. Let's go ahead and say that we're listing all the categories associated with each of these products. And now I can just say, all right, inertia render, and we'll create a component called categories, and we'll pass in our categories, which is just the category model, and we'll return all of them. If we go ahead and try to visit this now, it's gonna kick back an error saying that we don't have this component available yet. So yeah, we had a blank screen, and in the console log here, we see the page isn't found, pages, categories, JSX. So let's go ahead and create that now. So pages, new file, categories.jsx. So let's go ahead and export the default function categories and we'll return back some markup. All right, so we just added in some simple markup with a title and if we go back to the browser, we can see that it's displaying as expected. But we need to list out the categories that get passed in to this component. 
And remember, with inertia, that gets passed in with props. So all I have to do is say, all right, there is categories in this props object that we have up here because we are passing it in with this array down here. So if we passed in more than one property here, we'd have to update that object as well to include that property. But since we're only using categories, that's all of the properties that we need. And so now all we need to do is just map through these properties and return back, I don't know, something just like their name. So now let's go back to our browser and we can see that we have our categories listed out here exactly as we expected. And we didn't have to add anything in our component that creates a state and fetches data from an API. It's pulled in automatically from our back end and displayed on our front end. All right, so there we go. That's inertia in a nutshell. It allows us to build smooth, interactive front end applications, but bundled with your back end code that make it easy to develop, deploy, and maintain these applications. I will say as a sidebar, this isn't for every application. There are obviously still times where separating out your front end and back end code more cleanly makes for an easier organization of your code base, especially once you get into more and more complicated and complex front ends. But for a lot of projects that I've taken on recently, where you want that smooth interactivity that an SPA provides, but don't want to completely separate it out and have a different stack than your back end, this makes for a really great middle ground. If you want to see more examples of this framework used or dive into some of the more specifics of it, let me know and I can create a follow-up video to this that creates an actual application using Inertia. If you have any ideas for any other videos you'd like to see, let me know at the link in the description below. And I've also included links to the Inertia documentation and some getting started articles in the description as well. Thanks for watching.